Hi, my name is Sky Perry with SSP Innovations, and I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about one of my favorite topics over the years, Esri versioning. Now, this is a topic we've written many, many articles on, and we've created an ebook uh, that's been released on versioning. So it'll get you way more detailed information we're covering today, but I wanted to start off with a brief overview of the concept of versioning to kind of kind of get you started. So versioning again, all about an Esri geodatabase. And uh, I assume if you're watching this, you use an Esri geodatabase likely that has versions. So let's talk about what happens behind the scenes when we use a enterprise geodatabase with versioning. So we're gonna start off here in the Esri geodatabase. You imagine you're gonna create a new feature class. So in our case, we're gonna start off and we're gonna create a feature class called electric, which is our data owner, dot poll. Now when we create this, it creates the table within the geodatabase, a couple other things. One of the key things I wanna point out though is it's firing a update into the table registry or an insert into the table registry, which is a table that manages all the other tables. And it's basically gonna give it an ID. So we're gonna say the ID in this case is equal to one, two, three, just to keep it simple. So we've got an ID one, two, three assigned to electric.pull. Now this table's not versioned yet. We haven't taken that step. So the next piece we do want to talk about is as we register this as version, and that's a art catalog operation. Let's put version in there. When we do that, it creates two additional tables as well as some other sequences. But the two tables I really want to call out to you are first, it's still electric. I'll skip that part on the board here, but it's electric, and it creates A and uses that same ID here, one, two, three, for an add table, A123. The second important table that it creates is called a D123. The D is for delete. So we now, when we talk about the table, really have three separate tables that we're utilizing in the concept of versioning. The base table, you hear us call that the base table, is the electric.pull. We have electric.a123, which is our add table, and the D123, which is our delete table. So we call these the add and delete tables for short. Now, in versioning, the concept of versioning really runs heavily off of a thing called, let's put in parentheses down here, the state ID. So the state ID is used to really manage edits through time. So it's very important and each of these tables uses that state ID as new records are added to it. So this is the foundation of versioning uh, here using the registration ID and the A and D tables. And the next real thing I wanna look at is how do version edits get applied to these tables. So we'll actually come over here to the right and I've just simulated here three different edit types which are commonly made the add new record, the delete record, and the update record. And we're gonna talk about them all in the concept of electric.pull. All right, so let's start off there. If we add a new record, we draw a new record, we've created a version to be clear with an arc map. Uh, we've started an edit session. We put a new record onto the map, place new pull. At that point in time, we were actually writing to the A table. So we put a simple record in, it puts it into the A table, not into the base table again, because this is a version. We have to be able to see what, how it existed beforehand, so that has not been posted, has not been pushed up. So just a simple record into the A table. Now D, a delete, you can imagine, goes pretty much the same way. So the delete, number two, comes down here to the D table. This allows us, uh, with an existing record, you imagine we have a poll that maybe already existed up here. The D says, okay, we've deleted that record. Now both of these, as they're entered, are capturing state IDs within the versioning tree. Now our third one gets a little bit more complicated. This is a delta change. This is a update to an existing record. Could be an update to that ad we already made. Could be an update to an existing poll that's in the base table. But as maybe you're already thinking ahead, this update comes in and it first has to put in a delete. Then it also has to put in an add. So it's showing, hey, we deleted the old record. We've now added a new version of that record. So we have two individual records making up that update event. Now all of those changes could be in a single version and they're maintained as a group of edits, again, using state IDs. Uh, this data, however, is isolated to that version. If I go back and look at uh, a new version or maybe at the SDE default version, I'll talk more about that in a second, I'm only seeing the base table or whatever states were already posted up in that case. So let's move forward and talk about what happens with these edits as we move forward. Uh, if you're familiar with versioning, 
You've certainly heard of SDE for Spatial Database Engine. That's just the SDE user in your database. Uh, and we have the default version. So this is your top level version. And if we had no edits to the system, this would be the single source of the truth. All edits would be pointing to here and probably right out of our base tables. So underneath SDE default in the concept of version, we have many different edit versions. Let's just say one, two, and three. In this case, we'll call this, you know, this was already edited previously. So as we pull these versions, they can't see all of those other edits. And that's because SDE default, even though it has a name and all versions have a name at the core, points to a state ID that tells us what edits are included. So you're seeing state ID here, and you're also seeing state ID in our add and deletes tables. So these state IDs are really important. Uh, we have an article dedicated to the state ID because it's so important. It's the core of how versioning works. So SD default says, OK, I'm looking at this state ID. Which edits are included? We take the base table, and depending on where my state ID is and the point in time, it'll apply various add records and various delete records to render a view of the data. So as you might imagine then, progress through time. We have many different versions applying many different edits to our poll feature class. These tables here, the delta tables, are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as more edits are applied. So the question really then becomes, how do edits get from the A and D tables into the base tables? Because that's really important for the performance of our geodatabase. When I've edited a single version, referencing a state ID, a set of edits, I will eventually reconcile and post that version up. So we're taking a post operation. And that post operation is taking the edits from here, saying, hey, make these publicly available. Now, some people say, oh, when I post it, those edits get moved to the base table. And that's a common misconception. What's really happening here in this post is it just re-referencing SDE default, the public top level version, to a new state ID, a state ID that now includes those edits that have been posted. But again, other versions may reference an earlier point in time uh, before those versions are there. So the state IDs, again, the core versioning, are all lining up. It just re-references SDE default. So how do we get those edits down? The key operations that we have to undertake to get this posted is first a reconcile. So we don't have to post all versions. That's another common misconception. To get things to get to the base tables, you have to post everything. Not true. What we take here is the edits in this state ID that have been pushed up to SDE default and we need to reconcile them down. We're going to reconcile as an Esri operation, most often done through maybe ArcMap or maybe through a batch process. But we reconcile them down to all these one, two, and three versions. And of course, if you have a thousand versions, you get them into all thousand versions. Now, when we talk about reconciles, and this is a hot topic on its own, very important. If we have a single version that is unreconciled, we don't have a full reconcile across the system. If we have a single version that is in conflict, right? A conflict means that uh, an edit in number three conflicts with one of the states I'm trying to pull down from my posted version. That will not allow that reconcile to work. That basically invalidates a full reconcile. Either one of those cases, and, and the, the hardest part to understand, it only takes one. If you have a thousand versions and one version in that state tree is not reconciled, you're, you're done. Doesn't matter. You got to get them all. This is why we harp so much on uh, fixing your conflicts as the data is reconciled down on a daily basis to make sure that this is a continuous process. You may have conflicts every day, but if you resolve them, it'll be a, a moving uh, process that continues moving forward. So if we get that full reconciled, eventually the IDs here, this state ID, is that those states are reconciled down to all versions in your state tree. It invalidates those states. And it's only at that point in time that we can come up and run an operation that we call a compress. Again, this can be done in our catalog, can be done from the command line, or a, a, a batch application. So the compress effectively looks at the state IDs. Very important, again, state ID. Don't forget that word. Takes the state IDs, looks for any invalidated states that are no longer needed. Why? Because they've been reconciled down to all versions across the state tree. As it finds those, it can then go look at the A and D tables, in our case, the poll A and D tables, in your case, many, many more A and D tables, and it can take those edits and push them from the A and D tables up to the base table electric.poll. Now again, just, just to beat the dead horse a little bit, if any one version in this state tree has not been reconciled, either on purpose or perhaps because it has conflicts, 
those state IDs do not get invalidated. Now I can run this compressed 10 times. It will not matter. It will not affect the state tree. Why? Because it has to hold those old states. We have not invalidated them. So again, the reconcile operation will invalidate state IDs. That allows this to be effective. We always say the compressed being effective will reduce the count in these A and D tables, and therefore will keep my performance in my geodatabase humming right along. Very important for all these operations to work in tandem, a very complex topic, and that's why we have a series of articles and now the ebook uh, coming out on the topic. But hopefully, this scenario will give you a little bit of an overview and maybe get you a little bit more interested. If you're running one of these systems and you are the GIS manager or perhaps a GIS analyst, it's one of the most important topics for you to be familiar with. Ensure your geo database runs uh, effectively, that it performs well, uh, and that you're ensuring that the data is getting to the right locations uh, so that your geo database works efficiently as possible. So thanks for your time today. Hopefully this helped. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <sighs> I'm telling you. Yeah. I told you.